Everybody takes their health, their mobility for granted. It's not until it's yanked out from underneath you that you, that you realize how precious it was. And then May 2008, everything changed. Hi folks, welcome to this week's episode of the Huntsman's Creed. On today's show, we got some of Mike's earlier hunts. Well, some of those early hunts were some of my more exciting hunts. I love the challenge of going to a different part of the country. You don't know nothing about the game that you're gonna be hunting, other than what you've read. And the terrain is totally different, and the tactics have to change, you have to adapt, and that's what really, that's what rang my bell. I used to love those hunts. Well, let's take a look at that. Your first hunt, I think we have set up as a Newfoundland hunt. That was cool. You know, I remember when I first came over from England, my brother-in-laws both shot bows. Um, actually, the whole family shot bows. And it didn't take long for me to get my hands on my first bow. It was about 60 something inches long, recurved with about 25 wheels on it. I was addicted from the get-go. I loved shooting archery. And so much so, I was involved with a lot of the IBOs, the ASAs, the Cabela's shoots, all the shoots that were available, I wanted to be there. I ate it up, that's all I did. I loved archery. And my wife's like, we need to spend more time with the family. She didn't want me to quit, but that's the only way I could do it. I had to either quit or I couldn't do it halfway. I decided I'm gonna let go the tournaments and I'm gonna focus on hunting. And my goal was to try to kill all of the North American big game species. That's where I wanted to go. In Newfoundland, because it's an island, these are resident herds, they don't travel very much. So when you get out and you start glassing, they're generally that, I mean, we, we come across over 200 animals the one day, but they're generally what you're gonna see as the week goes on because they're resident herd. But there was one good bull, there was actually a couple of good bulls, but there was one I picked out, had lots of points on him. He had double shovels, nice bezers. He's only got splits on the one side. He's only got one point up on that left beam. He's got big bezes, and he looks like he's got a good shovel. There was a big rock that, st that stood out, and I was gonna try to get behind that rock and I belly crawled all the way up there. And as soon as they picked their heads down, I just lay my head down flat. And then I'd ease on a little further and it took, most probably 20 minutes to get there. And when I got there, a cow had seen me and she got a little jittery and she walked off and he followed her. Every time I'd make a stalk on him, not necessarily him seeing me, but just before I could get to where I wanted to get to, he would move on. That time of the year, what their problem was, was mosquitoes. In this particular case, they was trying to get onto these rocks that were sticking up above the rest of the terrain, so the wind would blow these mosquitoes away from them. It drives them crazy. I bet you I made 10 stalks on this dude and I finally got to a point where I pushed him one more time and the herd kind of drifted up and they got up onto a high spot. So I started a belly crawl again and I got to a point where it was the beginning of like a shallow pond. 
and I was getting soaked. So I said, heck with this. I stood up and I just crouched and walked a little ways, stopped when they picked their heads up. There were so many caribou up there. They must probably didn't see me for nothing but a caribou. But I eased my way in. I got to about 55, 60 yards and I was more than confident shooting that kind of yardage. And um, I stood completely upright, got full draw, set the pin on him and I nailed him. Once I shot him, the herd kind of dispersed a little bit and he ran like over the hill. The herd went to the left, he went over the hill and uh, I looked back at my cameraman. My cameraman wasn't following me, but he was just filming me doing this. I look back at my cameraman and they're all thumbs up, so it, it was good. Huntsman's Creed TV is proudly brought to you by the Huntsman's Foundation. Inspiring and enabling disabled Americans to enjoy our great outdoors. Action Track Chair. We provide freedom, independence, and mobility. Afflictor Broadheads. Resistance is futile. And McCabe Outdoor Mobility serving disabled Americans nationwide. This segment of the Huntsman's Creed TV is brought to you by the Huntsman's Foundation, helping to inspire and enable disabled Americans of all ages. What do you think? <laughs> it's a good shot, wasn't it? It's a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> we can see blood right there. He was standing right up on here and you can see the first blood on that rock. Let's ease up there gently, see if we can see him. I don't, I don't expect him to be too far over there. I, I, I hit him dead center. I shot for that opposite leg. Yeah. And uh, I pounded him pretty good. He was bleeding hard, wasn't he, when he left? Nice one. Looky here. Yep. Yep, he sure is. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this dude. He's got everything. He's got the double shovels. He's got nice bezes. Yep. He's got back scratches and tops. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a nice looking animal right there. And he's, he's about the nicest one we've seen all week, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And we've been seeing an average of maybe I'd say 150 to 250 possibly a day. He was in a huge herd. There was maybe 70 or so in this herd with him. That first stalk I'd done on him, I was belly crawling. My neck was killing me. I'm belly crawling like this. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get on him. And he, and he turned, he went, he went over the top and the I others know. came. I know. It was a 35 yard shot if you'd have followed the others. Yeah. But he went over the top and then, uh, you had to go over him. And then we managed to get up on him. I just, I, I come across that swampy bottom so, so slow. I, I didn't think he was going to stand there for me, but he did. I, I got a 55 yard shot on him and sure. made it count. 55 yards did not. That's a great animal. That's a pretty animal too. Look at that. I'm always excited. I'm successful because I've got my, my animal. But there's always a time there of remorse. It's, it's, it's really strange. I've talked to other hunters that have had it. Some people don't get it. I always get this, what a magnificent animal. And you're in God's country. It's, it's, it's a special time. When people say to me, why do you hunt? Most of the, I, I, I reply, why don't you? Because it's such a, it's a special time. And, uh, Newfoundland is just, just one of those places, a beautiful country, beautiful country. The BC is, is extremely steep. Um, I was hunting with a good friend of mine, Vinny, and we was hunting the Southern Kootenays, lots of grizzly bear in that country. Um, we was actually after a, an elk, and I went up with a bow. I spent 10 days there, we found some great sign. There was wallows up there, lots of rubs. We also found where Grizzly dug these ground squirrels out from under these little pine trees. And um, we found several places, you know, with a lot, a lot of Grizzly sign. You know, I know we're close to this bear. I know you've got to be careful when you're around bears. 
you know, throwing out cow calls, calf, calf calls. You've got to be super careful because that's a lunch bell for them. Our guide, I asked him if he would go on the other side of the ravine. I would stay on this side of the ravine, right at the bottom of where this, this bench kind of came down. Geographically, it was a perfect setup. And he went across there, he had a Montana decoy, hung it up, and we started to throw a little bit of a cow calls. This bull did not bugle the one time. He kept calling, kept cow calling, about every 10 minutes maybe. And then all of a sudden we heard a noise up behind us. And I could hear the, the, the like a few twigs breaking and I could hear an animal coming in, heavy animal coming in. Well at that time I turned around to David and I said, be ready because this might not be an elk. This could possibly and, and would be well probable for it to be that grizzly bear coming in. So I was kind of nervous there for a little while and it wasn't until I actually see the hoofs of this elk at 15 yards underneath the brush that I realized we're in, this is it. We, you know, we got our elk. What'd I tell you? Real horsepower, huh? Oh yeah. Good girl. Whoa, Betty, whoa, yeah. Don't forget guys, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Now, this is real horsepower. Come on, baby, let's go. This segment of the Huntsman's Creed TV is brought to you by McCabe Outdoor Mobility, serving disabled Americans nationwide. It was pretty thick there. There was lots of underbrush, but I managed to make the shot and, it, and we made it count. One tough animal. Second to last day. Thank you, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. It's a boot. Look at the train, how you gotta do it. You just gotta just hunt through. Sometimes you gotta look at a trophy in a few different ways, don't you? You can't always put the tape on him and no. You know, me, Dave, and yourself, we've kind of humped it a bunch. We went a long way today to be pushed out by grizzlies. And you said, what did you say? Well, I said the gods of the hunt must have something else lined up for That's us. That's exactly what you said. The gods of the hunt must have something else lined up. Well, now we're hunting in Quebec for the Quebec Labrador caribou. And that is a lot bigger animal. They got a lot nicer racks. And the terrain, again, challenging. It's different, a lot more rocks. There's a lot of rocks, a lot of high ground, and lots and lots of lakes. But it's a great place to hunt. And you have to fly in. And it seems for me on every hunt I do, there's always just a few minutes where I stop and I just take it all in, like a sponge. I just suck it in, it's just, I find a beautiful place in every place I go, no matter how barren or whatever. This hunt was really exciting. We had a blast. We was out with Mirage Outfitters. It was, it was so much fun. When I got my first caribou, it was snowing pretty hard. And uh, he was with a group of about five or six. And I picked out the biggest one, obviously. And they were fixing to get into the water. And uh, I managed to get them cut off in between. Oh, look, look at the shovel on him. Look what a dandy. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Lucky here, what a ball. Nice tops. Hey. Nice bezes. <laughs> nice bezes. Yes, sir. Nice bezes. And lucky, what a shovel. What a great ball. Back scratches. Never care one with back scratches. Huntsman's Creed TV is proudly brought to you by the Huntsman's Foundation. Inspiring and enabling disabled Americans to enjoy our great outdoors. Action Track Chair. We provide freedom, independence, and mobility. Afflictor Broadheads. Resistance is futile. And McCabe Outdoor Mobility. Serving disabled Americans nationwide. This segment of the Huntsman's Cree TV is brought to you by Action Track Chair. We provide freedom, independence, and mobility. We had caribou busting out of the water and just charging right by us, and we just had so many good encounters. I guess I had tagged one of the caribou, and that's another thing in, um, in Quebec, you're allowed to take two caribou. Good shot. Did you see where I hit him? It looked good to me. Oh God! But it was fast, it must like have been you good said. He's in the water right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't run 20 yards. He went right off this island. Bush. Look at that arrow. When it happens, it happens quick. Oh my God! He just comes storming up here. Look at him. Look at him. This is something else, man. Oh, Look at that, I shot him up here maybe 20 yards and he's in the water right there. He's done. Oh God, this is the second to last day and it's finished with, it's all over. We've been seeing, what do we see today? Three, four carat, yours was the fourth, fourth boo and then we saw like five more with it. Come and get me, come and get me. I will put my hands on him, wow. Oh, shoot! <laughs> I bet went in with a caravan. Settle down, Mike. I think he'll definitely make book. Oh, he'll do. <laughs> he'll do. Hey, look at the shovel. This is the shovel's right on his nose. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at it. Gosh. Look at the shot. Perfect shot. Look at that shot. Look how white he is. Look how gray his face is. That's what I noticed, how gray he is. Beautiful animal. Big shovel, great big bez. Look at the shovel, it's down on top of his nose. Big bezes. Look what a back scratcher. Look what two back scratches. He's got two of them. And the palmation healer. And the extra, this is, this is the last, one but the last day. I couldn't let this baby go. Look what a great shot. Right here where it counts. Unreal. What a hunt. What an end to a great hunt.
You know, everybody takes their health, their mobility for granted. I was the world's worst. I mean, I would do stupid things, climbing out on limbs to clear stuff. I'd do some crazy stuff. But it's not until it's yanked out from underneath you that you that you realize how precious it was. This kind of hunt, these, these hunts that I do, chasing caribou, bears, elk, moose, it fired my soul. It gave me the peace, um, everything that makes a man content. That's what it used to do for me. And then May of 2008, everything changed. Closed captioning provided by the Huntsman's Foundation, inspiring and enabling disabled veterans to return to the great outdoors. But can you hush? We're getting ready to start. <laughs> All right, hit it. Hi, folks. Welcome to this week's episode of Huntsman's Creed. Today we got a special show. Let me start over. All right. Snow. There's no snow. It's not snow.